Interview and job search strategies at work, episode 24. So I just got done with an interview. Uh, it was a project manager interview. Um, don't, you know, pretty pretty good, I guess, I assume. At any rate, um, so one of the questions they asked me was, uh, you know, so why do you want to be a program manager, right? And I said, well, I don't view it as a, how I view program management is more of a leadership role, a uh, program, you're leading the program versus managing the program. So I rely on my fellow people uh, to give me the best possible solution to succeed or the best possible knowledge to succeed because I work for them. They don't work for me. That's how it works. And I, you know, I let them, I, I told them basically. And I also told them exactly <laughs> the same information I talked about on episode 18. <laughs> exactly the same thing. And um, the other thing I mentioned was this, because they asked, "How would you, you know, deal with a, you know, a, a employee or, a bad, you know, like a bad apple, basically, right?" Um, and you know, maybe the company's not right for that person. Who knows? So um, I gave them a scenario like this, and it went like this. It said, um, "You're in a meeting room, and you're, you know, it's it's critical that everybody in the meeting room." gives you their their input so that you can make a decision just like any other company really and um, it's a way for because after all they're going to be one doing the work it's not going to be me doing the work it'll be them doing the work so they have to believe it they have to buy into the the solution that they're giving right and um, after the fact so everybody you know provides their input right except like one or two persons but there's always one person usually not always but in this case there's one person that um, isn't agree with it so what they do is they try to undermine you by chitter chatter or you know uh, talking to other employees you know about uh, the solution they have but they didn't actually say anything uh, during the meeting and the only way you're going to hear that that type of conversation happen between coworkers is that if you trust your coworkers and they feel that they trust you and you know an open conversation type meaning you just have you know someone just freely volunteers this information to you so um, what you can do uh, in that case is you call another meeting or you just maybe email um, everyone you know and you just make sure that okay this is the direction we're gonna go okay so who wants to do what who's tasked to what you know um, before we you know maybe it's an email maybe you have a follow-up meeting to it and you just make sure everybody in the office knows that this is their task this is their portion of the solution you're doing because if you if you don't there's no um, that that um, um, that chitter chatter that you know oh let's do it a different way that's going to creep its way in you know up to the minds of the people you work who work or you work for rather meaning the people you lead right and it could undermine you know just your authority real quick really quick and so just you know you want to make i told him i said it's very clear that everybody knows what they're doing and why they're doing it um the reason you do that here's the reason you do that so that person that wanted to do it um had a different plan or had a different approach by tasking them um, you know or giving them a specific task or assigning a task to them it gives them ownership of it so a lot of times you know you think it's a it's a problem meaning you know you're a leader or whatever and you think oh this person's undermining authority which may be the case but a lot of times they just want their own brand on it they want to know like hey can I just put my own name on this? You know, I want to, I want to, I want it to be mine. You know, I want to, I want to give my own personality to it, you know? Um, and if that's not the case, then you have, yeah, of course you can approach it a different way, but you know, um, most likely that's the cause. That person just wants to have, I just want to like, I want, I want it to be mine. You know, I, I've worked for this company so long and you know, I, you're a new person here, you're a new leader, and I, I may have gotten past a promotion or, 
I wanted to be a leader, but I didn't say anything. So now you're a leader, you're PM and program manager. But I want to, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to have my name on it. You know, so what you're doing is you're giving that person the they're they're getting the feeling like wow I'm I have my own wow you're giving me like my own like project basically you know my own little task to do it it's how I want to do it wow I'm not not being told what to do I'm actually you're giving me leeway to to do it like wow you know I, look there the job is a job right and uh, you know if they're not doing a good job you're if you're good you have a good team and you believe in your team and trust your team your team is gonna troubleshoot or whatever the term is the other co-workers you know if, if you have an open and fair and trustworthy team and they trust you and you trust them they're gonna um, they're, they're gonna um, discipline their own basically they're gonna make sure that 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 person you know they're gonna talk to that person hey Hey, listen, this person's not doing, uh, you know, the leader here, the PM's not, he's not trying to uh, undermine everybody. He's just trying to make it, he or she's trying to make it better. You know, we're trying to work as a team. And by you giving them leeway, um, the team, to do it kind of their own way a little bit, you know, and of course, you, you just, all you have to do is just take the project or whatever you're doing and just cut up in little pieces and hand it to them. Of course, you're responsible, right, as a program manager for getting it done. That's 100% on that deal. If it, does, if it fails, then okay, you fail, right? Uh, but that's just how it is, right? But by you breaking it up and, and, and giving it to other people who they feel ownership of it, wow, I feel ownership, wow. Um, you're just gonna, it's just gonna be, it's gonna reap benefits for you, 100%. And that's the message is really trying to convey uh, at the interview, so. Yeah, so the other thing, when I did talk to him about transitioning the, uh, <laughs> the the company, you know, my team basically, who I'd be managing, leading basically, uh, in the remote work, their eyebrows kind of like went up a little bit, like, or, you know, like, okay, whatever. You know, I, I don't think these companies understand that people don't want to work in the office, man. And if you own a company, um, you have... Um, if somebody works from home, right, you have all that square footage in their house that you can account for. Um, you can scale that that work from home space really quickly if needed. Meaning, give them a laptop, give them a desktop. Um, you can even, you know, I, I think it's going to happen in the future is you're going to see companies start to sell these. Uh, they're almost like partitions, basically, for work from home. They're going to call them work from home partitions. You can put them up in your house, and they provide somewhat of a sound barrier uh, for you, and, you know, when you're working from home, um, so that you can, you know, um, have office calls or whatever. Uh, I really think that's coming. Truth be told, I really do. Uh, yeah, you know, versus like you're in a company, and you know, you're well, I don't know. Let's say, gosh. Uh, five thousand dollars a month for the rental of the property and it holds i don't know 50 people something like that so that's 50 people in the office five days a week right means i have to every individual person has to get up go to the office uh wake up at six or seven or whatever the time they go to office they work you have power you have to pay for you have internet you have to pay for well that's nominal because you can just break it up if you want to um, you, you know, if they're at their home, you don't have to pay for internet. You just have to make sure that they have a VPN. So you have a VPN in, installed in your, in your company, uh, network. Of course, I didn't tell them all this stuff. You know, I don't want them, I mean, meaning the, um, um, I didn't tell them like the, you know, I didn't break it down for them in that regard. I just mentioned to them that I want to, um, take the, take the, take the team and move them to and transition them to work from home that's as far as i went with that really um but you know if you're a company yeah if you're a company and you can see the value in it really you can you know um when you start a company you don't have to have um a building you know 
you can do with a UPS store box or a PO box. That's an address. And you can work from home. You have your matter of fact I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a podcast about that actually. I'm gonna do a podcast about actually just explaining how you can have a company for super cheap and it's legit. Yeah. So okay, this wraps up this podcast. Thanks everybody for viewing this and have a great day.